my colleague Ivo uh, voluntarily uh, he offered to join me for the presentation, which is of course better. And we have input from our colleagues um, in Estonia and Lithuania as well. So it's not only, well, there's a bit of more focus on Latvia maybe, but it's, it's supposed to be a pan-Baltic presentation, international presentation. Ivo gave me this morning when he arrived in the Netherlands, the Baltic Times, and um, the headlines, the Baltics upgraded from less developed states to ones in transition, which is... Uh, comforting news for everyone. I must say I have been um, two times to Riga, one time to Vilnius, one time to Tallinn. It was for business and it was for pleasure. Um, the general overall impression I had is that it was the back garden of Scandinavia. I didn't have the impression of going to Eastern Europe and what Roland just said, it appeals to me. I, I really had the same impression and I love the Baltic states, all three of them. There are tiny differences, cultural differences between them. It's a bit of relation as the Netherlands with Belgium. We like each other and when it comes to football, we don't like each other. Um, nice countries, young countries, dynamic countries, developing economies, um, young generation looking towards the European Union, NATO, Western Europe. Um, trustworthy people and good climate for doing business, nice opportunities, small economies, small countries, but really worth looking at. Um, I will start the presentation with a general feel and then Ivo takes over and then every now and then I interrupt. So, uh, do you want me to have the remote control or? <laughs> it's easier maybe, thanks. Um, well, we are all part of the European law firm. We are a network of international uh, lawyers. The European law firm was established in 1989. We provide cross-border legal advice. We have 29 independent commercially involved um, law firms and amongst them Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Um, well, it's international, you see Hola and you see the three Baltic countries with the law firms and Ivo is of the firm Clotini Sergis. Uh, at first I would like to start with a few uh, general headlines which is, uh, well, can be handy if you want to start doing business in um, the three um, Baltic states. Uh, attractive legal climates for doing business. Evo will deal with that. Um, no tricks involved. Very transparent legal law systems. But of course we know our own Dutch law and if possible we want to, well if we have to deal with litigation proceedings we want to start proceedings in the Netherlands, not in Latvia of course. Um, uh, we want to avoid that. We want to start proceedings in the Netherlands according to Dutch law. No problem if you have a contract, international contract, one uh, party is based in the Baltics, the other one is based in the Netherlands, you can make a choice for Dutch law. And that can be explicit, it can be uh, in writing, it's not uh, necessary to be in writing, it can be even a partial uh, choice. You cannot set aside public order rules, but well, that doesn't really mean there's a burden. You can apply to Dutch law. <coughs> if there's no choice of law, then you have to beware. What is the applicable law? Well, the country of the seller, where the seller is residing, then that law will be applicable. The one who is providing the services, then that country, that law is applicable where the distributor is based, where the franchisee is based, the agent is based. If you don't not, do not make a choice of law in your contract, it means you are stuck to the law of the country where the distributor is established. So if you have a distributor in Latvia, you have no, not made a choice for Dutch law, that means you're stuck and there's Latvian law involved. Beware that if you make a choice of law in your general conditions of sale and delivery, that is not decisive for the applicable law to the framework agreement, for instance, the distribution agreement or the agency agreement. Proceedings, there are many um, European regulations and of course these regulations apply 
in the Baltic states as well. You can make a choice for a competent court jurisdiction. That choice has to be in writing though. If you do not make a choice, then you can always sue um, the other party in his place, of course, where he is established. Uh, and there are special competences, such as the place of delivery of the goods. If you uh, made a contract and you um, stipulated that the sale of goods is taking place in the Netherlands, then you're allowed to go to a Dutch court. Uh, what I want to highlight, I don't say that uh, Latvian law is bad, Estonian law or Lithuanian law, no, not at all. But please beware that you should avoid that the Dutch court should apply Latvian law or Latvian court should apply Dutch law. That Then you lose a lot of precious time and a lot of costs. Um, if you start negotiations with a company in the Baltics, then please uh, beware uh, to, um, to conclude a letter of intent and make an explicit choice of law for, um, for the law system and the jurisdiction. And then it's up to the Baltic States, Ivo. What does this photo of the bear mean? Right, uh, thank you. May I ask a question? Of course. Uh, partly I live in uh, Berlin, mm -hmm. and I know that if you negotiate a contract and a letter of intent, uh, it's worth worth nothing, you know, because you have to go to the notary, notary stamp. That mm -hmm. is legal. Is this the same uh, at the Baltic states? That letter of intent is is worth something, you know. A letter of intent. The first, the first step to, to a contract. Yes, it is a pre-contract. Yes, can be yeah. treated as a pre-contract. Absolutely. So um, you don't need a stamp like in France or in Germany. Germany, you have to go. Yeah, to yeah, notary yeah. Stamp. In to, to France as well, yeah. yeah, not in the Baltics. And but in in the Baltics, as you see, the general idea is that it's, uh, as it was already explained, it's quite cold. And you know, this this photo of the bear symbolizes that actually, you know, um, it's quite cold, but we still swim. So even at this time, we swim. We go into water, and I'm sure I was just coming this morning. Um, from Riga and it felt like I'm, I'm still in Latvia because it took me literally two hours. It was 15 minutes from the, my home to the airport and then I was on a flight, 10 minutes boarding time and then I'm here after one hour and a half in a train. So I could be as well in any part of Latvia. So And the weather like it's absolutely the same, at least today. And uh, so this, this bear could be swimming, I think, also in these waters, if you will. And uh, what, what I want to highlight by this is actually, um, I was very surprised myself when coming here, that actually we are very, very similar uh, in, in the context that I see in the climate-wise. And also I was riding a train, I took the second uh, level um, and I was sitting there and actually it's quite as flat as in Latvia. So <laughs> I didn't see, uh, the view was absolutely clear. I could see everything and that, that, was, uh, that was nice. You have more channels, yes, you do, you have more water. But uh, having said that, um, uh, when, when we are looking at the Latvian landscape or in the Baltics uh, together, because I will be, of course, speaking a little bit more about Latvia because I tend to be, uh, you know, uh, objective uh, towards the Latvian part. But anyways, uh, that all three Baltics should be regarded um, uh, in terms of commerce as one market. Whereas in Estonia, you would see, of course, they are always, they, everybody has heard they invented Skype. Uh, Lithuania and Latvia, what do you invent? Uh, did you invent Skype? Well, we use Skype, but at the same time, uh, I don't think it would be possible for Estonians to invent Skype if it wouldn't be for Latvia and Lithuania as well in the neighboring uh, parts. So um, uh, people, of course, very in many, many cases confuse uh, saying Latvia, Lithuania, and, and especially in different languages, so it's understandable. People confuse countries and uh, uh, it is um, actually for the reason that we are very similar in, in our uh, behaviors, in our legal systems, in our attitudes. Uh, but if we are looking purely at, at some numbers and at some languages and some investments, at some um, foreign direct investment, as you see, these numbers are uh, supporting what I just was telling. So uh, similarities between the three countries are there. 
Of course, uh, as, as Ferry was just saying, if you are writing a letter of intent or if you have a contract, so just, just be sure if you are in Riga, don't choose Lithuanian law, so that's a Latvian law, so, um, uh, and vice versa. As you see, uh, we all speak our own languages in Latvian, Lithuanian and Estonian, uh, and if you would say whether we can understand between these three languages, uh, not really, sometimes a little Lithuanian, yes, but not really, it, it cannot be presumed that we do understand altogether. But we speak excellent English, which is, uh, which is very good, and it helps to uh, negotiate all the contracts and also uh, it helps uh, one to draft a contract. So if you are uh, coming to Latvia, Estonia or Lithuania with an English language contract, be sure that you will not be required to translate it into Russian or into any other language. It will be understood if you will be presenting the, Lat uh, the, the, sorry, the English language contract, so that will be understandable and that you will not have any problems. Aside from that, of course, Russian is spoken and some other languages. As for the direct investment, of course, uh, it is understandable that Scandinavia could be the closest neighbor, so they have an interest in investing. But as you see by these figures, it is interesting to see that in Lithuania, the second place is taken by, by Netherlands. So, uh, um, of course, um, uh, that, that means that there is an interest and for, for industries, uh, there is an interest to come to the Baltics. Um, if we are discussing what could be the strengths of the market, um, um, as you see, um, what, what actually on the picture, this is the building of a bank um, that, uh, that is organizing also different conferences. It's the bank owned, for example, by uh, an American investment fund. So Americans have made an investment in the banking industry. And um, there is, uh, why, why is this, for example, this example with an American industry is that this is a strategic uh, location. Uh, people like to be there, not only that sometimes we are considered as a buffer, you know, just to protect from Russia maybe, and you know, it's a safe area, but at, at the same time it is a bridge and it's always been. And like the example with the furniture that was referred to, that it was made in Estonia a lot, uh, Russia will always consider us uh, attractive in terms of uh, also business and uh, also for leisure. But um, speaking of the infrastructure as such, uh, as you can see, and, and, and this is thanks to Ferry, he has calculated the 13 airports in three Baltic countries. That's a good, uh, good number. And as I said, it took me a two-hour flight to Amsterdam in Bombardier C-100, uh, C-Series 300. The new airplanes that we are buying, we are buying new Airbuses, felt very good, flies fast, comfortable, nice. 13 airports, good connections. So uh, this, uh, having said that, you can actually I know that Scandinavians, for example, make their business trips in one day. So they come in the morning into Riga and they leave at, in the evening. Not that our hotels are bad, but sometimes they need uh, extra time. Uh, yes, it's also a good infrastructure for the hotels. Everything is in, uh, for example, in Riga. Um, well, Riga is generally uh, considered now a, a hub, an airport hub for, for the Baltic states. And uh, it is that uh, all the hotels are a very close location so <coughs> to the airport, uh, meaning the city center is close itself. So it's like uh, similar if you compare, if you will, to Berlin, for example, the existing airport that is still operating. So the Riga is similar, even closer. So in 15 minutes, you can be in your hotel room. Um, yes, we have talked a lot about IT communications and, and these sectors. Yes, these sectors are very developed. For example, we ha even have 5G, 4G is a normal uh, thing for us to have, and really, internet outside Latvia, for example, is slow. If I go to Estonia, yes, I understand it. Uh, Lithuania, the same, yes, I understand it. I go outside, yes, it is slow. It is slow here, I don't get 4G. If a Latvian wants to open up a page and it doesn't open, he thinks something's wrong with his subscription or something. It should be opening immediately without a delay. We all have, um, I was telling to Ferry, he was saying, let's call our Estonian uh, colleague today. And I said, you don't have to do the Wi-Fi. He was searching for Wi-Fi to call on the WhatsApp. We don't have to do that. I have a subscription that is natural. I can call on my cell line because that's included in all the packages that you are using. So the, the infrastructure providers are, um, uh, are advertising this, that one can use all these uh, connections. Aside from that, optical internet, for example, is a normal thing. So if you don't have an optical internet in your office or you don't have a high speed, that's not considered normal. So you're living somewhere 
uh, why, why is that uh, to you? Why you haven't um, uh, arranged it? And aside from that, it is not expensive. Uh, I think the, the trick is there, not that we demolished everything, we didn't have anything. So this was all built new, all the towers, all the pipes and, and whatnot, everything was built especially for new infrastructure. So there we have it. Yes, but you know, it's good hotels, uh, fast internet, and so one might think, well, maybe I'm going into the jungle. So maybe, the, you know, there, are, there is no court, there is no government. Well, we have uh, as many as, as Ferry has parties, I think, in Latvia, for example. So you said 17? Political a, parties. Yes, political mm. parties. 17 in your 13, parliament? 15, 13, 13, yes. Well, for, for with Latvia, it is that if you have two Latvians, there are three political parties. So the same, you know, applies, uh, I guess it's also here. But at the same time, we have court system, we have government, and everything is working. And of course, the countries are small, and it is manageable and foreseeable. Um, uh, foreseeable in the sense that we can foresee how the things can develop and uh, also we can foresee how long, for example, court proceedings might be taking. Um, of course, the number one thing if you are coming here uh, to our countries is interest, uh, how it is with an employment. So uh, we heard that, uh, for example, uh, there are people hiring and uh, there are people looking for uh, workforce. Yes, young, dynamic, as the title was saying eager to study, eager to work, uh, yes, ready to work and uh, ready to commit themselves, work over time, and that is all the ambition of these Baltic states. Well, we have always portrayed ourselves, we haven't been royal, uh, for historically we always have been peasants, so peasants have always been working, so I think it's still in our DNA that we, we like to work a lot. So you can count on that, uh, but that's the employment is there, uh, very good education, universities, and also the employment laws across the Baltic states. I think I would like to uh, give compliments to our Lithuanian colleagues because they have uh, uh, last year adopted a new labor code that is very, very modern with all the uh, looks into uh, how, how the modern environment is asking um, and uh, the, the norms, the, the possibilities to hire people, to, to fire people, to reorganize are all there, taking into account all, if you will, Uber nation or, or uh, WhatsApp nation uh, that is uh, working. So you cannot uh, be asking uh, the same principles or from uh, the Soviet times to be applicable uh, today. So these laws are there and um, different forms of work are available. So it is possible to structure your uh, company if you're coming in different ways so you can save both costs and both understand in case you decide to terminate your business so you don't run to in paying a lot of compensations to your employees if you want to close your business. Uh, speaking of uh, legal protection, which is always of interest, uh, people like to know what happens uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a bad day when I wake up and I need to uh, litigate. So Ferry was already saying, you know, what law to choose and what law, law not to choose. And of course, Latvian entrepreneurs are, are not uh, born yesterday. They also understand they don't want to go to, to, to Netherlands and they don't want to use Dutch law. So they will be saying if you want to come to uh, our house, so this is our, these are our rules, so you want to use us, uh, this is how it's going to happen. So, as I said, we have the, we have courts, which is uh, not a surprise, but at the same time, uh, I must say that as a practitioner, I can say that the court systems have become very efficient due to the court reforms. The hearing of the cases is uh, very fast and you don't have to wait, like for example, in Spain, six months to initiate a case. Our cases are initiated in seven days, and I mean it. If you submit the claim, then after seven days, the judge has already ruled on initiation of the uh, litigation and you can get interim measures in 24 hours. So which means you can freeze somebody's assets um, or, or get a denial on that uh, very fast. So you will understand what, what is a possibility in, um, in, um, in these um, proceedings. At the same time, if you, don't, if you get scared and if you don't want to come to Latvia anymore, we have uh, video conferences and I can proudly say, for example, in Latvia that all the courts now as of a few months ago, have been uh, are using the video conference system, so you can easily hold a, um, a video conference with Latvian court, so you don't even have to travel if you don't want to be in the court in Latvia. At the same time, for example, 
as we speak, I can sign a petition to the court with my phone and submit it to the court, which is really cool feature, I think, uh, for uh, to be in the judicial system. And above all that, the court actually supports it. They accept these documents and they say, yes, it's fine. You can uh, you can submit digitally signed documents to us, even if you sign them by by your, with your phone. Um, yes, we also have arbitration and mediation, and uh, as a, as in the mediation proceedings. It is possible, this is becoming more popular. People were thinking first, what is mediation, which is popular in Europe, but they were thinking it's meditation. So the people meditate, so we didn't know about that, but now we know about it. And also arbitration, uh, where, as I have to say, that actually in, among three Baltic states, arbitration is more popular in Latvia and, and it's more a center. So if you ever have to choose uh, this Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry that is providing arbitration uh, and usually uh, it is within three, four months you can have final award. So if you, you don't want to spend one or two years or three years in Latvian court, maximum I think three years, then for example you can opt for the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry arbitration and you will have final award within four months, which can be enforced anywhere in the world because all the Baltic countries, for example, are parties to New York Convention on Recognition of the Judgments. So if something goes wrong or if you want to sue or if there is a legal protection necessary, so you can be assured that it can be decided and it can be solved uh, also in, um, in Baltic countries. Well, um, always when we are speaking about the, um, how does it feel to be in Latvia, so you remember the picture with the bear, well, he, he probably does not care if he's swimming in that cold water, but um, how do we feel when we swim in this Baltic Sea together? When you get one Latvian, one Estonian, one Lithuanian. So uh, the, 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 the longest, I think, time uh, we spent in water is for Estonians because they are the coolest. Uh, coolest meaning they are, you know, you would not expect from Estonian immediate opening up and, you know, he would really be uh, still waiting uh, for you to make an effort for him to open up. And once you have done it, then, then you have made friendships. The Latvians are more optimal temperature. We are in between. And uh, Lithuanians are warm. So you would, you would feel that they are more welcome and uh, they, they are more down to earth. So, uh, but I think Lithuanians are more serious than Estonians. Lithuanians tend to be very serious and just open up in the end. And Estonia, well, as far as I know, doing business in Estonia is fun. But they open up, they like uh, vodka, and uh, that's doing business in Estonia for me. And Lithuania is more serious, I think. It's more long term. And Latvia is in between. Right, and, and we always, always... My, we, as a foreigner, of course. We always, as Latvians, for example, we consider it to be in between. We always, of course, there are these jokes about the nations and who is, who is better, who is, who is worse, and we think we are better, but that's natural, you know, uh, to have all these uh, uh, ideas about each other's country. But at the same time, when, when it comes to some serious business advice, then you can, uh, in Latvia, when you're coming, you need to take into account that usually there is no a big corporate structure in any of the Baltic countries as well. So you would see that uh, stakeholders, uh, owners and the CEOs are uh, usually in one person. So if you are speaking and you're meeting with CEO, most likely he's also the owner of the business. So um, uh, also if you would be asking for some information, you would not be getting much information. So people would tend to not to give it to you. But uh, once uh, the target has, uh, has been very convinced that there is a serious interest, then you would see more information opening up. Otherwise, your interest asking about business would be like, why is he asking me about this? And like, what does he want? He has some uh, secret behind it. Whereas in uh, in Western culture, it's more appropriate to find out these facts and understand what is your business partner. Yes, and something that I'm telling my clients also uh, and, and, and trying to teach Ferry when he's in Riga, the, what time we are having dinner and what is dinner and, and lunch. Actually, we don't have a word for lunch even in, in our countries. There is no lunch because we call lunch time, we call dinner time. So if you say you want to have dinner, we say dinner is 12 o'clock. No, you say dinner is at night, so we don't do dinner. We have a lunch, we don't have even translation for lunch. So uh, that, that's why we are advising that uh, din dinners are during lunch time and evenings are for families and drinks are with friends. So uh, nobody is going to go to the bar and drink with you. This is just for friends, so don't be offended. And also, uh, 
evenings are for families, so please don't ask the business people to go out and have the dinner. They want to go home. <coughs> Nobody wants to spend the night. The right time uh, for the dinner in, in Western um, idea is during the lunch. So that's the right time to ask it. Just, just to conclude is some, uh, some facts about Latvia that we, we like to uh, jump over bonfires uh, and uh, we still believe in some superstitious things. But uh, on a serious uh, side, we have 800 Art Nouveau buildings and we have the most modern winery uh, in Europe. So something to explore and people actually enjoyed it. You can ask Ferry, he tasted it end of September Latvian mm. wines. He enjoyed them. So uh, I think that uh, he can be a good ambassador to that. Um, maybe, maybe one remark. Um, uh, it was not in the presentation, but it is really easy to start a limited company in the Baltic countries. Approximately in Lithuania it takes three days, in Estonia it takes two days and in Latvia it takes one day. You can even start a limited company online. No problem that you are a foreigner, no problem foreign ownership of the companies. Costs about 2,500 and in Latvia there's even a possibility of a capital of one euro, isn't there? Right. Yeah. And our record is uh, establishing uh, for a big holding company, a uh, Latvian daughter company. We submitted the documents at four o'clock in the afternoon and next morning at nine we had it, the state notary had registered it already. So of course some prep work needed but at the time of registration if it's really pressing you can have it in one day registered. And also opening of bank accounts and, and, and so on. Of course the appropriate vetting is done but it's fast and efficient and um, easily set up and also closing of the companies if you end up not doing business is also the same easy procedure. And electronic of course as, as you saw from the previous presentations. Digital electronic is something that people are looking for um, all the time. So if you want to explore something new, trustworthy partners, the Baltic countries, nice people, good atmosphere and good sound economies, really orientated Western Europe style, more and more.